Hello, welcome again. And this is more a tutorial for the beginners, as I always asked. People who are starting to use a multimeter and want to learn just the basics about a multimeter before they get comfortable with it. Um, and like I always said, I always use the Fluke multimeter. Now, let's say a typical, typical battery, a 9 volt battery. Okay, we want to measure the 9 volt battery. Make believe this is a car battery, any battery. So, First of all, I'm going to do these things that you try to correct me. Now, I'm going to go and measure, obviously I'm going to measure 9 volts. The first thing, what's the first thing that I do before I even do this? Okay, we're going to turn on the meter. Okay, we're going to put it on. How are we going to put it on? DC volts. We're going to put the light on. See this little light? That's why I like this multimeter because you can put the light on. See the difference? So, before I measure anything... What do I do? Always put on ohms, always short the leads. So which one is ohms? This sort of a horseshoe upside down. That's called ohms. I have to short the leads. I have to make sure that these leads are not broken. Once you do that, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the lowest possible ohms that I can get. Okay, now. Put it over here, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 ohms. That's acceptable, okay? Now, what does this represent, like I just said? It does not represent the resistance of the meter. The meter is 10 million ohms. The, the resistance of the leads, these leads have resistance, and I wanna make sure they have the minimum amount of resistance possible. So therefore, I'm looking for 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms to make sure that the leads are okay. 0 0.3 is, is acceptable. Can I do this on something called continuity? This is continuity over here, as you can see. Can I do, a, this is the continuity button. This one over here means it's audible. It's going to be audible. So when I short the leads, you're going to hear audible sound. And that's what I want. When do I use that? <clears throat> Let's say when I'm checking a lot of fuses, I don't want to keep on looking at the display of the meter. I just want an audible sound. Once I hear this, 0.2 ohms, I know <clears throat> I have continuity, the fuses are good, or the wiring is good, as I said before. Okay, perfectly, either one, whichever is comfortable for you as a beginner. Like I said, this is auto range. Always put it on the range. It does the work for you. There is no easier easier one than this for a beginner how high can it go 400 ohms over here now we're going to do something we're going to measure a typical typical wire okay for this we'll pause coming back to the video here's a typical typical wire and i want to mimic something in the vehicle let's say you have harness wires those harness wires go from the fuse panel to their appropriate circuits that they are feeding. So those circuits could be ignition coils, it could be fuel injectors, whatever, it doesn't matter. Maybe you have 100, 200 wires, hard wiring. Now, this represents one of those wires, let's say. Okay, let's mimic it. When I do a, a test, an ohm test, how much should I measure? You should measure on this wire, let's say this is one of the wire, of the 200 wires, I should measure, as you can see, 0.2 ohms. That represents a good connection from one end of this wire to the other end of this wire. Correct? Now, so you're gonna say it's a good wire, okay? Now, let's, let me show you something on the wire, okay? Now, as I said before, I'll show you. Now, you see this, I stripped it. The question is, if it's a good wire, right? If it's a, if it's a, if it's a good wire, why am I measuring 0.3 ohms if it looks broken to me, right? Doesn't this look broken or stripped? The answer is the insulation is stripped or frayed or broken. However, what is this meter measuring for the beginners trying to understand electronics? It's not measuring the insulation. It's measuring the conductor of it, 
whether it's cop or whatever it is, it's just measuring the cop the 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 electrical part of it, which is the conductor part, and to the meter, since this is a continuous straight electrical path from one end to the other end, it tells you, guess what? It tells you it's good, it's a good connection. Even though you see it stripped. Now, why did I do this? I just explained before. This is one of the harness wires. This gets exposed. When it gets exposed, what happens? As you know, where's ground on the vehicle? Ground is all over. Not hard to find ground. Chassis, engine block, um, any metal conductor, right? What happens if this represents one of the wires coming from the fuse panel going to ignition coil like i said fuel pump whatever let's say this exposed part of it touches ground what will happen okay obviously it's going to create a short obviously right so let's say the fuse blows i take out the fuse i say oh boy fuse is blown right not looking at the components and saying okay i tried all the components there's no short across the components what am i left with I'm well left with maybe the wiring. This, here's, here's the problem, and this is why I introduced it. When you do a continuity test from one end of the wire, let's say from the fuse panel, let's say to the fuel pump or a sensor, wherever this goes, what is it going to show me? This is the gist of everything. It's going to show me a good wire, a good connection, just like it does now. It's not going to tell me, the meter is not going to tell me, you know what, your insulation is... Uh, stripped or or uh, uh, exposed that's not what the meter is about it's just going to tell me from one end of the wire to the other one it's good it's intact how does that help me so now i have a problem the fuse blows and i'm not sure what it is but i think it's the wiring right so like i said before the only way you're going to find out is when let's say you drive the car Let's say you hit a bump or a vibration, obviously. This part of that wire that goes to the fuel pump, stardom, or relay, or whatever, will touch ground. When it touches ground, guess what happens? It's going to short and blow the fuse. That's what we want, right? But sometimes that protection is not enough. Sometimes the wiring or the connector can also begin to get overheat and smoke. So now, at least you're going to say okay so now i can measure that wire in that area at least i got it down to that area and see where the problem might be so to re reiterate and to to go over it i have a problem i believe that it's the wiring what do i do i measured the wires from the wiring harness from one end to the other end as i am here as an example i believe maybe the wiring is stripped I go to the wiring from the fuse panel to a sensor, wherever it's connected to, according to the schematic. The meter tells me I have good wiring, 0.4 ohms. That doesn't help me. When is it going to help me? Again, when you start driving, vibration, this hits chassis, metal, anything ground, then the fuse will blow and overheat, and, uh, and then you'll begin to detect the area of overheating or the, the problem area. So this, a meter measuring these type of faults is good, but it has its limitations also, as you can see. So therefore, as I said before, as, as, I, as I was uh, explaining, such a case, before you put in a new fuse, like, I be, like I've been uh, describing, always measure the resistance from one side of the fuse to ground, and you would measure a short but here's the problem maybe this part is not is not touching ground so i will not measure a short correct only i get the short when this exposed wire is touching a frame or like i said engine or um, uh, um engine ground or any chassis ground but right now it's hanging and it, there's no problem so i put back a new fuse fine eventually you start driving and guess what? Then you see something smoking or overheating. Then you get the idea, okay, now I know the area. Kind of a difficult one to diagnose until you see the problem. However, 
the reason I brought this from the very beginning was I want to show you not all problems obviously are component related sometimes it is the wiring remember wiring gets stripped it gets frayed it gets exposed it gets animals get in there especially if you go up in the woods in the wooded areas the animals get into the vehicle and they start chewing on these things now let's say I have one wire exposed and there's another wire exp exposed I might not necessarily have a short to ground I might have less resistance which will create more current being drawn that doesn't mean I have a short to ground so there's a difference as I explained the videos my channel is Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto and go to that and you'll see uh, videos of things like that now if I go and measure the battery I want to measure a battery this is, this is a car battery any battery what's the first thing that I do when you measure something even the fuse panel anything which probe do you put first to measure the positive or the negative always when you measure something with a multimeter always put the ground first you don't want to be ground you want the meter to be ground right always go first it's the opposite of putting the battery cables battery cables you always do what the battery cables you always put the positive first with the multimeter and this has to be automatic to the technician always always with no exceptions put the meter the 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 negative one always put it first always no exceptions now where do i put it on is this ac or dc we're gonna put it on as you can see we're gonna put it on dc volts but not millivolts because we're going to measure something a little higher so where are we going to put it on we're going to put it on volts now as we said what happens what happens if the car battery or whatever what happens if it's a car battery and i flip the leads in other words i did put the negative first right but i put on the positive you see that negative sign what does that mean that means polarity has changed I have the opposite so what can I do to undo this mistake well you can take out the leads put the negative here and the positive there but why should you do that there's no reason in the world to do that because all you do is flip the leads so the positive symbol everything that has polarity of battery has to tell you which is the positive okay always so all I do is flip the leads and sure enough 9.6 is good on this one so coming to that any battery those battery obviously in a car can get recharged this cannot get recharged this gets trashed however a, a, a battery like this you should me you should measure about 9.6 9.4 out of circuit open load they call it if i put it on a load if i put in a radio or whatever it should it should go down to about nine volts if i would measure nine volts like this instead of 9.6 no good when i put it in the load or the appliance it'll go down even less than nine volts no good measure 9.6 9.4 on a on a on a single cell battery that measures 1.5 you should measure about 1.65 if you measure 1.5 no good it'll go down even more because why you're pulling current as you pull the current from this battery, this voltage goes down. So if it was 9 volt right now, open circuit, it'll go down even less to 8.7, 8.6. Not good. The circuit needs 9 volts. So I hope this was helpful for beginners. Like I said, the best meter, auto range over here. It gives you the decimals. You don't have to worry about anything. Just click it on and it works. You could put them... A manual you could set the decimal points but why should I do this if it does it for auto you see the decimal shift so I would get 9.67 now I will get 9.6 now I'll get 9 volts you can control that this is called the manual mode of this meter by how many digits you want it to display but why should I do that let the meter do its job let it give me automatically you see how many digits i have 2.951 so on the battery it would tell me 9.6 it automatically gives you the best decimal 
uh, uh, output, display. Nothing finer than this for the beginner because all you do is, like I said, put this on, the appropriate uh, a unit of measurement that you have, put on the light, and you. I always use the light because see how dark it is without the light, especially at night? Put on the light. Like I said, most digital multimeters do not have the delight to display it. This has. This is the best for them. Better than Snap-on, Craftsman, all of them. This is the standard. All troubleshooting industries have been using this for years. The Fluke is, the, is just the, the, the best, especially for beginners, like I said. So, please, resistance, go to this horseshoe, right? Continuity is this one, the audible. Let's review. DC volts is this one. You have two choices, millivolts. This is volts. That's why I like this. For the beginner, you see? It tells you what it's on. DC and volts. You can't make a mistake. Let's put it on this one. What is this? It's DC volts, but DC millivolts. Too small. What's this? DC volts. Auto. In auto range. What's this? AC millivolts. Okay? So it tells you you cannot make a mistake. The best meter for somebody who's trying to learn... The basics of how to use a multimeter correctly. Please go to my channel, Jala Schematics for Auto. If this was informative, I'm trying to make more hands on, and we're gonna go under the hood hopefully very soon. Like I said, uh, been asked to do a couple of projects, I could not pass up that offer in electronics, so I'm being busy with that. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.